Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are continuing our series on making bacon at home, and today we are going to do a measured dry cure bacon. Um, there will be some weighing, there will be some basic math, um, like grade four math, so it's very easy. And what I like about this recipe is that you can control the salt content. Um, most of the other bacon recipes out there that you're gonna find if you're surfing around on the internet, uh, just throw on the salt, throw on the pink salt, throw on the sugar, just load it on. They're called the excess salt method. You put on too much, and then at the end of the curing process, you rinse it off, you taste it, and it's going to be too salty. And then they tell you to soak it uh, in order to remove some of the salt. That doesn't make sense to me. Why not just start with the right amount of salt and seasoning right at the very beginning so that when you get to the end of the process, you can eat the bacon right away. So that's what we're gonna to do today. It is a measured dry cure. Um, at its most basic, it is salt, pink salt, and sugar. Um, the pink salt is uh, prog powder or pink cure. It's not pink Himalayan salt. So if you think you've got pink Himalayan salt, that's not what this is. Um, and then we're going to, we've got two pieces of belly and we're gonna flavor them slightly differently. Uh, one just with pepper, and the other one is going to have pepper, thyme, juniper berries, and bay leaves. So, uh, first things first is we need to weigh everything out. So here's how this method works. First thing you do is you weigh your piece of pork belly. Um, I'm gonna do it in grams because that's very easy for me. The math is very easy. Ounces, I, I, I'm not comfortable in ounces, but if you like ounces, go ahead and use ounces. Write down your weight. Now, 2.5% of the weight of the pork is what you add as salt. And you can use any salt you want, just make sure it isn't iodized. You don't want iodized salt. Next up is the sugar. 1% of the weight of the pork is what you add as sugar. 1% math is very easy. Now, prog powder, pink powder, prog powder number one, pink salt, whatever you want to call it, that is 0.25% of the weight of the piece of pork. Mix that all together and your cure is ready to go. Okay, so I've got everything measured out. I've got the cure mixed together for each of our pieces of pork belly. And to this one, it's just ground black pepper. Uh, it's, so I know what you're thinking. It seems like very little cure, but a whole lot of flavor. And here's the, Here's the, the reason behind that. Um, because we're doing an equilibrium type cure, uh, you don't need a lot of salt and pink salt to actually make this work. Um, also because it's going to air dry in the fridge. Uh, and the second reason for the, what seems like an enormous amount of flavorings uh, is that a lot of the flavonoids that are in these flavorings won't actually penetrate the meat all that well. Um, so most of the flavor is only going to be on the outside of the bacon. Um, the only thing that will penetrate is the salt, the pink cure, and the sugar. And if you're going to smoke it at the end, like I'm going to do, uh, the smoke will penetrate. But the actual flavorings will pretty much only stay on the surface. So give this a really good mix. Make sure that it's really well incorporated and then we want to rub it into the belly. Now, when you're rubbing this in, you want to make sure you get it everywhere. Um, really rub it in, get everything really well coated. It's incredibly important. And you want to put most of the cure on the side of the belly that doesn't have the skin on it. The cure ratios that I have given you in this recipe are all about leaving the skin on the bacon. And you're going to see that even though it seemed like there wasn't much cure, um, when you go to rub it on, it's going to seem like a really big job to get it all rubbed in. Great. So this is a dry cure, which means you want the salt to pull moisture out of the pork belly. And as that moisture is pulled out, you want it to drain away. So you don't want the belly to sit in any moisture uh, during this process. So I'm lucky enough here in the studio to have these um, commercial kitchen bins 
they nest together, it's got holes in it, and I can put the pork belly in here and the water will drain into the bottom and it will never touch. Um, and over the course of three or four days, you just tip off the water every once in a while. If you don't have that at home, which I don't expect you would, why should you? Um, a glass baking dish with a rack that fits inside does the job just as well. Um, you want to make sure that you use glass or ceramic. You don't want to use a metal baking pan. Uh, the salt reacts with the metal. You could get off flavors. Um, this is a stainless steel rack, so you're fine. There will be no, there will be no reaction. Um, and uh, anything you can do just to keep it up out of the liquid, and then you pour the liquid off every day. So. Um, First thing is I put the pork belly in and I started out skin side down and any of the cure that's sort of left in the bottom of the pan here I just pour it over top. And the same with this one. And it's, it's interesting, just in the time that it's taken me to rub the cure on I've noticed that already water is coming out of the pork belly. Um, it's already starting to work. The salt's going in, the water's coming out. So there we have it. Now these go into the fridge for five to seven days. These are about a kilo to a kilo and a half. Three or four days is really all these need to cure. But the beauty of an equilibrium cure is that they will reach that equilibrium after three to five days. But if you leave them in there 10 days, 12 days, 14 days, um, they're not going to get any saltier. Uh, and actually, it will work better because the flavor will develop, which is really what you want. So just over a week has gone by, and this pork belly is now cured. Um, you can see it's pretty dry, and uh, the cure has done its job. Now, in the bottom, you'll notice that not much moisture came out of these pork bellies, or not much moisture drained into the pan. It could be how long it took this pork belly to go from the abattoir to the grocery store where I bought it, and it also could be the humidity level inside my fridge. If my fridge has a very low humidity level, the, uh, the moisture in the pork belly is going to evaporate rather than drain out. So don't be worried if you don't see much liquid in the bottom. At this point, what I need to do is rinse off the excess cure, and I'm gonna do that down in the basement in the brewery because I've got a nice big stainless steel sink. Now, before we can smoke this, I need to put it back in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours in order to dry out the surface. Uh, this really prepares it for the smoking process. And uh, 12 to 24 hours is the recommended on the short side. I've seen, um, five, six, seven days uh, in some literature. I've tried it at that length of time and I really like the flavor that develops and the texture. Totally up to you. I'd probably start on the short side the first couple of times and then go a little bit longer until you find the sweet spot. All right, so Glenn, you've been making bacon. So tell me, what have we got here? So this set is all dry cure bacon. Dry cured bacon. Okay, so dry cured pepper, dry cured cure juniper. Oh, dry cured pepper and dry cured juniper. So. Okay, so these two go together and these two go together. Okay. So the idea is um, they're all dry cured. One has only pepper, one has pepper and juniper and bay leaves and okay. a bunch of other spices. And then just like last time, I cut them in half, I smoked half and I didn't smoke the other half. So today we'll cook these up and do a taste test. Okay. So. Similar to the last one. Similar to the last one. Um, get an idea of how much the pepper and the flavors penetrate. Okay. You have another I'm, question? I, well, I was. I was going to say, how much did you modify these recipes from the last ones? So the last ones didn't have any flavoring at all. It was just cure. Okay. So this is cure and, and flavor. flavor. Just um, to confirm. And I've left the skin on. Last time I pulled the skin off before we got to this point, I left it on because I needed something to attach. I've got 12 pieces of bacon in the fridge. And I, need, and I need to keep them. I do like the safety pin method. Yeah, I need to keep them labeled so that I can know what's going on. So I assume we won't be eating the skin. No, I'll, I'll slice it and then cut the skin off so that. Um, Excellent, you're going to slice it. I'm like going to slice better. it. Time to get slicing. 
All right, I'll get the pan first. So here we go. Which one do you want to start with? This one? Okay. So that is juniper not smoked. Juniper. No, just pepper. Oh, just pepper. Okay. Yeah. Am I supposed to start right away? I'm yeah. I'm wait for you to cut them off. Uh, doesn't matter. You can start right away. In my case, there we go. It's very good bacon. I like the peppery flavor. Pepper's pretty subtle though, isn't it? Yeah, but that's okay. I wonder, I mean, if I feel like it tastes different than the last time we made it, but I don't know for sure. Still really good bacon. Oh, yeah. No. Okay, so this one is Same smoked. Same, smoked. smoked. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. You can really get that smoke flavor and a slightly different texture, too, I'm getting. Mm-hmm. It's not as... Uh, dried? Yeah. I think I actually prefer the non-smoked, but that's a oh. bias, I think, more of a flavor bias for me than... Uh, I would, I would, non-smoked would be my choice on that, too. Okay, so, this one is the juniper non-smoked. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Subtle, though. So is that thyme that I taste? Yeah, it's thyme and juniper and a whole bunch of other things, but yeah. So I really like the thyme, but it's not a flavor I expect to have with my uh, bacon. Thyme, though, is something that is in breakfast sausage. And that's so it. So you kind of get that. It has that breakfasty feeling. It feels like it would go really well with eggs or other things, like it complements other things. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this one is smoked. Hmm. That one, I really like the smoked in it. Mm -hmm. I wonder why the smoked, well, that's just the way flavors work, right? The smoke really goes well with the... Something something in the smoke and the juniper and the yeah. thyme, it all kind of comes together, whereas with the pepper, it didn't work quite as well. For you and I. Yeah. That being said, you might like something different. So that's why the first few times you make bacon, you should try a couple of different things and figure out what works and what doesn't what work. What you like. What you like. And so these were smoked for two and a half or three hours. Maybe that's too long for you. Maybe that's not enough for you. I know some people go eight or nine hours. To me, eight or nine hours in the smoker would be... That'd be a lot of smoke. That would be too much smoke for me. So, this is dry cure. We also have wet cure and brined bacon. So, you right. can check out those videos as well, as well as the video where we make the smoker and we smoke the bacon. More bacon. More bacon. Um, all of these are winners, though. Every one of these is yeah. better than whatever you would buy at the grocery like, store. Uh, well, especially because it's, nice, it's a nice thick cut, and I really like the texture. Yeah. Actually, I think that's what, of all the things, it's that texture. The, the texture that is I really fantastic. Like. So. That's great. So, um, tidy up time. Tidy up time. Swap of these two pans. Okay.